Hi everyone. Um, I've been listening to a lot of the Bee Gees. And I have to apologize yet again for the lens quality and um, May was absolutely insane for me. I, if I wasn't taking a final, I was prepping for it. And I finished with all of my uh, finals and tests and projects and everything last Wednesday was my very last day. And I'm filming this on Monday. So I uh, have been taking it easy, listening to music, hanging out, um, still trying to get stuff done and working and, and things, but at least I've been able to sort of take a break from the constant stress of having something to do. I think the how busy I was really impacted the kind of products that I reached for and um, the needs and concerns that I was trying to treat. And recently there's been um, an overwhelming amount of pollen and allergens and histamine inducing substances in the environment. So everyone that I know has had a runny nose for the past couple weeks, myself included. My immune system kind of got weak because I was, you know, really busy and really stressed and tired. Um, and then my respiratory system wasn't functioning and it was just constant stuffiness. So my skin has been really sensitive and uh, I still have sort of a little phlegm going on. Um, but because I was so busy, I wasn't able to get the lens taken care of. And I'm actually going out of town starting this Wednesday and I'll be gone for a week. And so I won't be able to fix the lens until I get back uh, and see what's going on. So in, in the meantime, I'll uh, just give you an apology for the fact that I'm probably out of focus. I'm filming this video a little early. Um, it's only the 22nd because I have a week less of experience with skincare um, and the possibility that I might have tried a new product or changed my mind about something, I'll update you guys um, closer to the end of the month with some of these products. Um, I'll be taking them with me to use while I'm home. Um, so if you are curious to see how any of the products, if they've changed at all, then I'll update you that way. This video is going to be really long, so hopefully you've got coffee or tea or wine or water ready and a snack. So at the very end of April, I actually had the pleasure of meeting Moonami and Mai, who is uh, one of the founders of Moon Skincare. On my mom's side of the family, uh, my grandma's Japanese and Moonami is Japanese, so we bonded over that. And uh, we met for um, lunch, but we ended up having dessert and tea and just talked for hours and um, really connected. She's amazing, so smart so uh, passionate about everything that she has done in life and, and how she's um, grown and learned from it. She understands ingredients, understands uh, how they impact the skin, um, understands references and, and cultural and historical significance. So fabulous. And uh, she was kind enough to uh, send me home with the, the Full Moon Collection. And so I've been using um, the range and um, I've got a couple that I really want to mention. We'll just go in order based on stories because I, I actually tried to film this earlier and I went in order of how we use things and it just, the flow wasn't right. So the first is the Aqui Purifying Cleanser. My, well, my immune system's been down. My skin's been more sensitive and more congestion prone. Um, I've been getting breakouts on my chin, especially on my nose, like on my nose, not really around, but like to the tip of my nose. Um, but this cleanser is quite nice in that it has a lot of castor bean oil in it. So it has that clarifying ability, the deep cleansing action, but it won't dry or strip the skin. It's not like it's a harsh surfactant or a soap or anything like that. Um, it does have argan, camellia, rice bran, um, some surfactants, but they look like they're going to be quite mild. Um, and they, in fact, feel quite mild on the skin. And a little yuzu, so that's what it gives it, like a very um, earthy but citrus scent, which is really enjoyable. It has a nice like gr grip to it. You can really massage the skin, but it, there's not like that slipping and sliding around. Um, it does emulsify with water and it turns into a very soft milk, uh, rinses away clean, cloths off beautifully, leaves that clean, clarified, balanced feeling, but no dryness, no stripping, no irritation, uh, which I really like. And, um, but I like that there's a high oil content to it, you know? So if you have a combination or oily skin, you would probably get even more benefits out of it than I would. Um, I love this body toning serum. I've been using oils on my body like it's going out of style. I haven't really been reaching for lotions all that much and I actually think I, uh, I did a post on Instagram about my the body oils that I was using at the time um, and this is definitely one of them and I would classify it as a serum in fact, exactly as it's labeled because it really truly absorbs into the skin 
pretty quickly and um, it doesn't leave uh, a film behind or a sort of a protective coating. And so she said she wanted something that bridged a body oil and a body lotion. She wanted like the qualities of a body lotion and that they're lightweight, absorb easily, um, hydrate and nourish the skin, but she wanted you know, the potency of, of the oil and the um, all the omegas and the fatty acids that you're going to get from an organic grade, cold pressed, you know, super pure oil. And that's what this is. I put it on my skin and then I can immediately get dressed. And that's really, really nice. Something that I've noticed with all of the Moon products is anything that has a scent comes from just the extracts and the, and like truly, you know what I mean? Like I put this on and it smells amazing while it's going on, but then 10 minutes later, I don't smell anything anymore. The scent is dissipated. And that's because it's not synthetic fragrance and it's not like she purely extracted the scent from the, the lavender and then got rid of everything else, you know what I mean? Some um, consumers have actually reported that they've noticed a reduction in the appearance of their stretch marks on their hips and thighs. They tracked this client's results over four months and the client took the pictures herself. So um, I saw the pictures and they, they looked less noticeable. So um, continuing on with body, um, when I want something that's a really beautiful scented experience, then the, the serum is what I would reach for. But um, in general, I've been actually reaching for unscented products, like unscented oils and just plain one ingredient oils. Um, and I think it all started with the Argan. I am the first to admit that I was never one who was super interested in just one ingredient oils because I, um, I know that there's other ratios of omegas and other vitamins that are in different oils so it's so hard for me to you know just use one when I know that I can get the benefits of a lot of a blend but um, I think the simplicity of it is what makes it so good and this is just something that you can put on and not have to worry about it you don't have to think about it it's to me it's very quick and easy and I, I like that um, and I've been needing to do that this past month when I ha literally have no time so uh, I started using this and then I received these a little while before this from um, Bare Origin and um, I talked about the golden chocolate oil a couple months ago I think but um, she also sent the pure argan and the wild rose hip and I've just been using these on my body um, let, like head to toe um, I like that the argan from Moon is extremely lightweight and doesn't have a scent to it both of these smell very like cold pressed um, like oils you know what I mean and I don't mind that I the Argan has been really nice for um, like arms and legs, and the Wild Rose Hip has been great for legs, or um, excuse me, thighs and stomach and chest, um, because it's a little bit more uh, moisturizing and firming. So between these three, I would say five out of seven days, this is what I'm using, and uh, I've been really liking the, the simplicity and the unscentedness of it all, even though, as you all know, I'm the first person to like talk about the scent of a product. Um, lastly from Moon, the uh, Brightening Youth Serum, and this is, what I would call, I guess, their flagship product, and it's one of the first they came out with, if not the first. Uh, so it's prickly pear, argan, and rose, and again, the simplicity is what makes it so good. Prickly pear has a lot of vitamin K, vitamin E, um, a robust amount of omega-6, or three and six? I should have researched it, but it's really nice under the eyes. It's very lightweight. It's great for brightening, softening, plumping the skin. I did find it to make my eyes look a little bit more vibrant after a couple of days use. So I'm gonna keep playing with this. I'm taking this home with me. So uh, let's continue on. I, uh, I overdid it with my skin one day and that was because I used this, the Bateman Skincare Alpha Hydroxy Exfoliating Gel. So all that's in here is water, lactic acid, and xanthan gum, that's it. The formula doesn't have anything to really help it penetrate the skin, so the stinging is sort of gradual. Uh, and they say to leave on one to five minutes, depending on your tolerance, and then use one to three times a week as tolerated, or as tolerated, which I really appreciate that they're telling you to just kind of take it easy. It's lactic acid, it has, you know, immediate resurfacing benefits, but it also will kind of hydrate the skin at the same time. I just don't think my skin was ready for this when I used it. I've actually been upping my retinoid frequency of use and I've been using a retinoid almost every single night and then they're mild I'm using the votary still the Jordan Samuel the Dr. Dennis gross overnight and Luna every once in a blue moon um, And those have been great. I don't think that I've overdone it with my skin I don't think that I've used too many um, too stronger retinoid too frequently but I think that combined with my immune system and all of that blah 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 
that this was just too much at the time that I used it. However, I think it's a fantastic product. It's 35 bucks for four ounces. There's no fragrance, there's no essential oils, there's nothing, it's just literally three ingredients. Um, and I did find it to be extremely effective on my skin. I used it on my hands and actually on my feet and it was amazing as well. Uh, so if you just kind of want a really good lactic acid product and you don't want to spend a ton of money for it, I think this is a great option. I'm very excited to continue using this. Um, but I'll probably save it for when I get back and my skin's had some time to kind of recover. But it did make me start to think about using soothing products. And that's where these two come in. Uh, Paula's Choice Resist Omega Plus Complex. They actually sent this to me, I would say, at the beginning of the month. And um, I hadn't reached for it until a couple days ago. Um, and I've been using it pretty much nonstop ever since then. And it's really nice. Uh, I think that this is a really smart product because if you're someone who can't tolerate uh, oils or you just don't like them but you still recognize the benefits that an oil can have, this would be the kind of thing to look for. Um, it is, there's cholesterol, there's fatty acids, there's ceramides, there's omegas, there's plant oils, there's definitely oil in here, but it's actually a very lightweight kind of creamy serum. and. Uh, but it melts into a fluid consistency as you massage it into the skin because it's Paula's Choice There's no scent to it literally whatsoever um, It leaves behind a very soft Like you know when you use a really lightweight Hydrating moisturizer that just feels really nice on the skin. That's what it feels like. It doesn't feel like um, Sticky or tacky or heavy or silicone-y um, and that's my beef with Paula's Choice serums most of the time is that they're silicone based which yes, it keeps the oxygen out of the formula, but I just don't, from a tactile perspective, I don't like the way it feels on my skin. So this is fantastic that it just feels really good on the skin. And um, for some people, you might even be able to layer with this. Like if you did a hydrating serum and then something like this, and then a moisturizer and skipped the oil, you might see some benefits. Um, or if your skin is hypersensitive, if you deal with um, frequent redness or irritation or dryness, or sensitivity, something like this would be great because that's why I recommend oils all the time for those concerns because I, I know that strengthening the skin is a great way to kind of keep it a little bit more balanced, but not everyone likes oils. So I'm excited to continue playing with this. Again, it's only been a couple days, but after I overdid it with the lactic acid, I wanted to replenish my skin. And this is one of the things that I was using. I did find it slowly but surely balanced my skin out. So that's good to know. Um, and then the Parsley Herb Toner from Yuri Pibu. I think that this is, as calming as it is, it's also very balancing. Not in a drying way at all. I don't find that this strips my skin or leaves my skin feeling tight and uncomfortable. But it definitely doesn't feel like super plumping, super um, nourishing, super dewy and glossy. It's more of a balancing kind of softening toner that does have um, lavender and parsley. And that's one of the reasons I love it. So good. And I was pleasantly surprised. I'm the first person to um, hesitate to try Korean beauty products these days, not because I think there's anything wrong with them, but I just connect with green beauty or certain clinical products a little bit more. Um, but all the um, products that were sent over from Glow Recipe and Sophie, hey girl, um, I've really enjoyed and most of them have been from Yuri Pibu. So I think that's something that I'm gonna file away for future reference, but uh, really nice balancing, softening, calming. I would say along with congested and dehydrated, it's been dry on certain days as well. I know, my skin is just like falling apart. Uh, so I picked this up actually from uh, the store credit that I got from, from the rep program that thank you to all of you who've um, purchased through the link if you have. Um, I've actually just picked some stuff up to try. And the moon mask is one of the ones that I was curious about and um, I really like it. I also purchased the stretch concealer and it's not right for me. I, I just think it doesn't cover the way I like my concealers to cover and it takes a little while to build up. And I think if you just kind of want to use a little bit to kind of even out redness, maybe around the mouth or that sort of thing, it would be nice for that. But if you have like dark circling or a really obvious zit basically, I, it's not gonna, it's not the right concealer for that. So that one I, I personally would pass on, but the Moon Mask is really nice. It is creamy, it is um, moisturizing, and truly so. It has like a cooling quality to it, or not like a menthol cooling, but it just feels like, um, yeah, just like feels temperature-wise colder, 
which is really cool. Um, the thing I really like about it is when you rinse it off, it gets very slimy and like, uh, and then when you kind of pat your skin dry after rinsing it away, your skin does feel more moisturized, more hydrated, and truly so. Um, not in a, I personally afterwards wouldn't skip a hydrating serum, but I definitely notice my skin feels more hydrated and more comfortable. It doesn't really have a scent, which I really appreciate, and I, the couple times that I've used it, I've just honestly left it on for like 30 or 40 minutes and did other things, and then when I removed it, I noticed difference, and um, I don't really own a lot of moisturizing masks. Uh, so I'm excited to have this. While we're on the topic of Glossier, I also picked up the sunscreen. It smells like sunscreen, first of all, which um, I don't mind. I love the smell of sunscreen. I literally have a Demeter suntan lotion fragrance on, in like my living room, but it smells like sunscreen and they say that it's not supposed to and it does. Um, so that's, take that for what you will. But beyond that, um, it is inorganic filters, meaning it doesn't have the zinc oxide or titanium dioxide like the sunscreens I normally reach for. Um, it's uh, avobenzone 3%, homosalate 6%, and octosalate 5%. Now there's been some sort of controversy um, in the avobenzone that homosalate and octa, um, excuse me, octosalate are protect against UVA and UVB rays, yes, but they degrade in the presence of UVA rays quite rapidly. And the avobenzone doesn't, but it's only 3%. So a lot of people's concerns are that it's not gonna give you as much UVA protection as you might think because the 3% is quite low. Um, and personally, that's just why I, in general, avoid um, inorganic filters because I just, I don't want to risk anything and I haven't done enough research on each of those ingredients even though I'm working on a sunscreen post to really understand and, and be bothered to have to like worry if my sunscreen is going to protect against UVA rays the way I want it to or not. And that's why I reach for organic filters, especially ones with zinc oxide because zinc oxide on its own is more stable is more photostable and, and titanium will block some UVA, not as well as zinc, but will still block some. Um, so that's just, I just reach for zinc oxide sunscreens, full stop. So once I know more, then I'll be able to give you a full review and that'll probably be on the sunscreen post, which I'm hoping will be done in about a month's time, if I'm being realistic. Um, the texture is very nice. Um, I'm sorry, I haven't been swatching things. Uh, it is a true, like, fluid gel. It does have the little micro capsules. You can definitely see, like, little capsules in the product before you massage it in. And um, it smells like literal sunscreen. Um, very light. They didn't put any solvent alcohol in the formula, which I really appreciate. And that's my only beef with some Korean and Japanese sunscreens, uh, which I do enjoy. Like, I, I'm using the Nivea Sun Gel SPF 50, and I really like that. And my, my both my parents use the Biore watery essence rich, I believe. And I've used that a couple times and I really liked it as well. But the solvent alcohol is just, if you can formulate without it, then that's better, right? So I don't know, it doesn't stop me from using them because I recognize good sunscreen is just more important than a little alcohol that is going on top of eight layers of like oils and emollients. Um, but the fact that this doesn't have the alcohol in it is an extra big bonus. Um, but I will say if you want to experience something like this and you just are mainly concerned about the SPF rating and the, the texture, then I would just go with one of the Japanese or Korean sunscreens because that's what this pretty much feels like. I'm glad that Glossier is very adamant um, with the campaign that they did about getting people to wear sunscreen every single day. It's something that I'm much more cognizant of than I used to be and I'm, I'm putting sunscreen on every day like I should be, which is good because I hate sunscreen most of the time. So it is invisible, it is a gel, it is lightweight, it feels great on the skin, it does work well under makeup, but I need to check more on the filters to, to make certain, and um, yeah. It's only an ounce, and that kind of, for me, I'd prefer something a little bit bigger so I can be more generous with it and not have to repurchase it as, as frequently. Um, still using and loving the green screen, though. I think this is one of the best sunscreens I've ever used. That's a big statement. Um, how about this? I'll confirm if it is in the sunscreen post when I get it up, which I'll let you know on Instagram when when it's going up, but um, it's just, it's so good. And it's, when I haven't been testing the Glossier, I've been using this. And when I haven't been using this, I've been testing the Paul's Choice. So between this and the Glossier and the pharmacy, these are my sunscreens for the entire month of May. And these are the sunscreen for the rest of the month of May because I'm gonna 
Probably, well, I'm gonna take all three to, um, my mom has been looking for a new sunscreen as well, so I'm gonna have her try these and see which one she likes the most. Um, but the Polish Choice is really nice. It is SPF 30, it's 13% zinc, there's a slight pinkish cast that kind of counteracts the blueness of what zinc oxide normally looks like on the skin. But um, it doesn't, once it dries, it hasn't changed the color of my skin tone at all. And I don't feel the need to like kind of bronze it up or, you know, put foundation over it. Even though when I did put foundation over it, it was really nice. Uh, it's got a lot of psychopentyl oxide in it, so that'll usually do that to the skin. Um, but you can see quite nice, not really changing the color of the skin. And again, once it dries, it's perfect. So I've been really liking this. It's two ounces for 33, I think, which is a great price for a sunscreen if you ask me. Uh, no fragrance, no essential oils, no dyes. Um, and I was very hesitant to try this because the last Polish Choice sunscreen I used was I think the Moisture Skin Recovery or whatever the pink one, and I hated it. So, um, but I have been liking this, so that's good. So sunscreen, yay. Um, Next, we've got Lena Hansen. So they were kind enough to send over a couple products. I want to start with the Global Face Serum. So as much as I love this moon, like that it has no scent and there's only a couple ingredients, I love that this smells to die for. It has a ton of fabulous ingredients in it. Um, it is very glowy, very dewy, very softening, uh, very, yeah, just very enlivening, I would say. it's. I described it as tangy on Instagram, which is... I think the best word I could probably use to describe it. Um, it's a full ounce, which is nice if you're someone who doesn't like the size of these. So this is size comparison. This is like your La Belle Loon, your um, The Youth Do from May Lindstrom, your um, most, you know, serums come in this size. Whereas this is what a full ounce looks like. So you do get more product, which I think is really nice. And so I've been a little more heavy handed with it. Um, and I find it definitely moisturizes my skin, but it absorbs the way a serum an oil serum ideally should, and uh, has been giving my skin a very nice radiance, which I love. However, this is what takes the cake, the Global Treasures. This smells like... It reminds me of the Honey Mud from May Lindstrom without that honey quality. It has that rich cocoa and vanilla and slightly sweet orange vibe. It is green, there's like gold flecks on top, which is super opulent. You would need like an eye cream size amount for your entire face because it melts completely the way the, like, the Blue Cocoon does for May Lindstrom. And it's only an ounce, which I appreciate because balms tend to take a lot longer for me to get through. So I like that I'll probably be able to finish this before it expires. Thea seed oil, shea butter, apricot, cocoa seed butter, Kalahari melon, pearl powder, green tea powder, vitamin E, gold, coffee bean, vanilla, and mandarin. So very simple, but very, um, with a lot of really robust ingredients in it. They're all, it looks like certified organic, which is top marks. And I love the, I love the packaging. I love the attention to design on Lena Hansen's products. It's just from someone who like is obsessed with like artsy things in case you couldn't tell. Um, I love it. So I, I really had high expectations going into it because they do pay so much attention to branding and the story and the ethics of the brand. And the fact that the products are so good makes me even happier. They also sent the Global Face Trio and I've only used it once so I can't speak on it yet, but it smells like a lemongrass and clay dream. Um, but I have to say this balm is like so good. And thank you so much to Lena and her team for sending that over. So uh, Joshua Collier, um, on his honeymoon, which congratulations to Josh and Chris, uh, he went shopping and found out that Byredo fragrances are like 25% cheaper in, all, in uh, Australia. So I was like, okay. So he was kind enough to pick me up a Baldef Freak um, because I've been just drooling and foaming at the mouth for the idea of Byredo in my home. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's beautiful. It is, first of all, packaging, branding, everything stunning. I get a lot of figgy qualities from this, but I think to me that's just translating as like the fleshy pulpiness that this fragrance has and that it's um, it's not a sweet or bright citrus fruit. It's a very rich earthy fruit. There's a lot of vetiver in here, um, a nice amount of floral, but it's not, um, I wouldn't say it's like floral lead. It has a definite um, juiciness to it and fleshy pulpiness. And I think that's the best way I can describe it. Um, so that's been phenomenal. Thank you to Joshua. And um, 
that completes our video. I am going to be filming a couple more and um, sorry this is so long, um, but thank you guys for hanging out with me and I will talk to you again very soon. Bye.